to the daily grind thanks for checking out the channel make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy because you know what time it is it's full time mma all right family let's get to the good shit el jefe himself has spoken Dana White's came out and addressed a lot of the recent rumors and reports and just the topics of news in the MMA world as of late, including the Conor McGregor Bellator incident, the Conor McGregor bar fight rumors, he talked about the Nate Diaz versus Tyron Woodley rumors, I mean he's coming out and breaking the silence on a lot of this shit which is good to see because we don't really get to hear from Dana White as often as we may like in this new era of the new owners of the UFC where they've been kind of silent on a lot of these topics as of late. Well, Dana White came out and he's spoken, and the first thing I want to talk about is him claiming that Nate Diaz has essentially rejected fighters with everyone on the roster. Now, one person that he did say Nate Diaz did not deny a fight with was Tyron Woodley, which is weird because, I mean, as far as I was, un I was under the impression that that was one of the only people Ty Nate Diaz had turned down a fight with. I mean, we had Nate Diaz's own camp talking about Nate Diaz going into camp and you guys are going to like his next opponent. And, uh, you know, after the Conor McGregor Bellator incident and when he was allegedly pulled from the UFC 219 card, you know, it wasn't just Tyron Woodley saying, yeah, man, I got a contract to fight Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz's team was tweeting and deleting shit. Nate Diaz himself was coming out posting himself you know in training gloves like he was getting back into a camp Tyron Woodley's side came out saying accept the fight don't be scared homie got on TMZ saying I've got the contract sign yours now Dana White's coming out and saying no 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 that's that that's not true and he's saying that you know it was essentially fake news cooked up by a rogue UFC employee you know he said you know a lawyer essentially was like hey what about Nate versus Tyron and you know we listened to him but it was I'll, I'll read exactly what Dana White had to say but this is what Dana White had to say in, in response to uh, the Nate Diaz versus Tyron Woodley situation he said one of our attorneys here started playing matchmaker and said he has good rapport with the Diaz brothers and he basically said what if you could fight Tyron Woodley me and Sean Shelby were like how does he deserve to fight Tyron Woodley there's a fucking list of guys that are waiting to fight Tyron Woodley and this dude's gonna fight what are you talking about so he kind of went off the reservation a little bit and started playing matchmaker that's why you started hearing Woodley saying I got offered a fight with Nate Diaz and we were like no there was never a fight Woodley's been talking about I need shoulder surgery I need shoulder surgery and then he's like I'll fight Nate Diaz and starts calling him out and shit it was a nightmare none of that was true now that when earlier on I, I alluded to a part there's you know just one thing in all of the stuff that Dana White said recently that I didn't really necessarily believe just because it didn't really make sense to me and, and it's really this it's like a, you, I mean for Woodley to be saying I got offered a fight Nate Diaz signed the contract on a platform as big as TMZ I mean we, we've seen this exact situation kind of with um the who was supposed to fight Paige Van Zandt was it Beck Rawlings that was supposed to oh no, no no Jessica I she was supposed to fight Paige Van Zandt and she said I got offered a contract and anybody that's fucking in the business knows if one fighter gets offered a contract it's because the other fighter got offered the contract as well so you know for Tyron Woodley to say he actually was offered a contract and it, not only that Nate Diaz's camp came out alluding to him fighting and then even right here in Dana White's statement he said one of our attorneys said he had good rapport with the Diaz brothers and said what if you could fight Tyron Woodley like talking about Nate to Nate Diaz so it's not crazy to me to think that this fight was being talked about I mean this fight actually as, as crazy as it may seem to some people it did make a little bit of sense because it set up possible other fights Nate Diaz has links to Tyron Woodley Nate Diaz is a pay-per-view draw we know that the UFC is trying to sell pay-per-views so that's why it wasn't too far-fetched when we heard that Nate Diaz versus Tyron Woodley was a possibly a thing now the only thing that was kind of throwing us off is like okay like Dana White said there's other welterweight contenders that would have been pissed off at this situation and also Tyron Woodley's shoulder surgery which is kind of what threw this fight off um aside from nate diaz's coach coming out and saying they wanted 15 million dollars i mean that that might have been a factor too but Dan and that, that's another thing that kind of makes you think that some of this is true dana white says none of that was true it's like well then why was nate diaz's coach coming out and saying we want 15 million to fight woodley and all of this stuff so i do believe there was a little bit of truth to the nate diaz versus tyron woodley rumblings i mean 
now necessarily how close it got done i don't know if it ever was close to being done as far as nate diaz signing the contract he was probably in my mind it's more like a yeah i'll fight tyron woodley or i'll fight anybody if you give me 15 million but if you don't give me 15 million I ain't fighting nobody. And that's what brings us to the next point of Dana White said that Nate Diaz has essentially turned down a fight with everyone on the roster as far as lightweights are concerned. Because, um, and, that, and that would make sense. We know Nate Diaz has not fought since the last time he fought Conor McGregor. We also know Nate Diaz struck oil pretty much. He hit the lottery when he beat Conor McGregor at UFC 202. Or was that the second fight? I mean, it's, yeah, that was the second fight. Holy shit, what was it, like 196? Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor, the first fight. Because Nate Diaz was not originally scheduled to fight Conor McGregor. That, you know, Conor McGregor's opponent fell out. Nate Diaz stepped up and then got the win. But before that Conor McGregor win, Nate Diaz definitely wasn't getting the money that he felt like he deserved. I mean, he had been, he was one of the few fighters that were verbal about, you know, verbal against the UFC before it was the cool thing to do. They always spoke out, miss, you know, they did that. So now whenever he beats Conor McGregor, the UFC's golden child, it's kind of like Nate Diaz with these contract negotiations. It's kind of, I mean, it feels like like sticking it to the man. Like you guys didn't ever want to hear me before. Now you motherfuckers got to listen. You guys want me to fight these people? You want me to fight all these people? Well, I feel like, I'm. you know, Nate Diaz is kind of in a power position right now. It, if it weren't for that Conor McGregor win, nobody would be giving a fuck about Nate Diaz holding out and not fighting. And all of these, you know, every time Nate Diaz something does something, it's news right now because he hit the lottery pretty much with that Conor McGregor win. And if if Nate Diaz did come out and just, you know, get beat a couple of times, he probably feels like shit. You know, he can get thrown to the wolves again. So he's... In, in the current um, environment of the of the UFC, so you, I mean, of course we want to see these guys fight, but you can't blame them because they really only have this position of power w whenever they're, you know what I'm saying? They don't have much of a voice when they're not in a position of power. So for Nate Diaz, somebody that's been speaking out for a long time, who's finally being fucking heard by the masses, he's kind of sticking it to him like saying i want 15 million to fight so of course if the ufc offers him all right here's a fight with edson here's a fight with khabib here's a fight with tony here's a fight with kevin lee he's gonna say how about 15 million okay yeah i'll fight him 15 million i'll fight him 15 million and you know that can happen with everybody nate Diaz, he, he's like i'll fight anybody but i want what the fuck i'm worth and i know you guys need me so he's just bargaining right now is he pricing himself out of the game probably is 15 million too much yes but that's the number he threw out in the tyron woodley situation and if you'll fight tyron woodley for 15 million i mean shit he might fight one of these lightweights for 10 million but i'm saying the th problem with paying nate diaz 10 million dollars is opening the floodgates there's going to be fighters like what the fuck you're paying nate diaz 10 million dollars my record's way better than nate diaz's uh you know they might feel like they're a, a champion might feel like if he's getting that much you know the current D demetrius johnson the current pound for pound number one fighter he's trying to get like 1 million for a fight so if you give nate diaz 10 million he's gonna be like what the fuck you're giving this guy whose record is way worse than mine he's never defended a belt not a ufc champion he gets 10 million and then you got me the pound for pound fucking greatest who's who's struggling to try and get my 1 million so then what happens if demetrius johnson starts holding out yeah i know you guys want me to fight but uh i want 10 million like nate 10 or better actually i want 15 because nate got 10 you know and then someone's gonna be like wait but demetrius johnson doesn't sell i'm a bigger star than you know what i'm saying it's gonna open up the floodgates if nate diaz were to actually get paid that lump sum of 10 million to fight and he said 15 he said 20 before so if nate diaz even got half of what he initially asked for then it, it would open the floodgates for all of these other fighters, and the UFC just can't do that. So when Dana White says he's turned down a fight with everybody, it's not like he's scared of the actual fighter. It's just he wants fucking paid, and if they're not going to get paid, he's probably going to keep saying no, unless he gets a Conor McGregor fight where he's going to get paid no matter what because the pay-per-view is going to be on fleet. You know, he's going to sell. He's even just getting a percentage of Conor's pay-per-views is like getting fucking $5 million to show up and fight one of these other dudes because that's how much your fucking share is most likely going to be. But with that being said, Conor McGregor's not coming back for a while. So when Nate Diaz gets that large lump sum of show money, he's probably not coming back for a while. It is what it is, man. Let the full-time family know what the fuck you tap me in the comments. I'm out. It's the motherfucking D-O-Double-G.